When it comes to the coronavirus crisis, many countries have aimed to flatten the curve, forcing the number of infections to plateau and slow to ensure that hospitals don't run out of capacity on a day-to-day -day basis. Some countries have succeeded and others are on the path to doing so. So we're making a series of videos on this topic, looking at which countries have and haven't been able to successfully flatten the curve. In this one, we'll be focusing on the EU, which has been quite badly hit in some places and left relatively unscathed in others. Specifically, Italy, once the epicentre of the virus in Europe, Spain, which experienced quite a bad outbreak compared to its neighbour Portugal, as well as other major outbreaks in France, Belgium and Germany. Over on our UK channel, we took a look at other countries around the world, including the likes of China, the UK and Iran, while over on our US channel, we took a look at how the United States is hoping to flatten the curve. Head over to our UK channel now to check out that video immediately, and subscribe to the US channel to be notified when that video is released. Before we dive deep in specific countries, let's take a look at how Europe has been coping with the outbreak compared to other countries. This graph shows the total number of deaths in each country as reported in recent World Health Organization data. As you can see, seven out of the top 10 are in Europe. So let's rewind a moment and see how European countries got here. Initially, China was leading the outbreak, but in the middle of March, Italy's outbreak really took off and the country soon became the nation with the highest death toll in the world. During the same time, Spain also saw a rapid rise in cases and deaths, taking over from China not long after. Another country also seeing its cases escalate was France, who, after going back and forth with the US, settled in fourth place. In the last couple of weeks, this order has remained pretty consistent. China and Iran have slipped down the table, leading some to question their data, and the US has become the most impacted country. But these European countries continue to hold some of the highest death tolls, despite huge increases in cases in countries such as Brazil, which is still yet to make it onto the table. So let's consider why these countries have seen cases continue and still suffer some of the highest death tolls in the world. To do that, let's dive deeper in some of the countries and see whether they've been able to flatten the curve. Let's start with Italy. They had one of the worst and first flare-ups in Europe, especially in the north of the country. It was one of the first countries in Europe to suspend all flights from China, with many countries, including the UK, quickly imposing travel restrictions upon those coming from northern Italy. During February, the outbreak was mainly contained to the north, specifically the Lombardy region. By the 23rd of February, with new cases hovering around 100 a day, a number of Italian towns went into effective lockdown, closing schools, businesses, restaurants and public offices. Regardless, cases continued to rocket up, hitting some 1,500 cases per day, before an official quarantine was imposed. From the 8th of March, with total cases in Italy bordering 6,000, anyone living in Lombardy or 14 other Italian provinces required special permission to travel, affecting some 16 million people. With cases continuing to climb, just two days later, at a time when Italy was classed as the worst hit country after China, quarantines were extended across the whole nation, with the Italian Prime Minister ordering people to stay at home and for the whole of Italy to become a protected zone. Because it takes a while to detect those who are infected, the quarantine takes some time to impact total infection rates, meaning the total number of daily increases continued to rise, surpassing some 4,000 daily cases by the end of the week, and going on to peak in excess of 6,000 cases in one day the following week, with non-compliance with the quarantine invariably allowing the infection to peak higher and higher. However, with the quarantine now filtering through and limiting social contact, cases finally began to plateau and decline, zigzagging downwards as pressure alleviated. So, has Italy managed to flatten the curve? On balance, it appears so. While cases are still fluctuating, there is a clear downward trend which appears to be sustained. However, as the country begins to lift its lockdown, questions invariably arise as to whether a second wave will materialise. From next week, people will be allowed to visit relatives, potentially increasing the rate of infection once more. Another country of interest is Spain. Spain was hit quite late, but quite hard by the outbreak. The first instance of community transmission in Spain occurred at the very end of February, with cases only beginning to pick up in mid-March. The issue being that when they did pick up, 
they picked up fast. Within a couple of days, cases vastly increased from in the region of 500 to the region of 3000. Then, on the 14th of March, a state of emergency was formally declared and a nationwide lockdown put in place. People will be required to stay at home and all non-essential shops, bars, restaurants, cafes and cinemas ordered to close. However, as the impact of the lockdown inherently takes time to reduce case numbers, they continue to climb, hitting a peak of close to 10,000 new cases in one day in late March, before beginning to decline to around 3,000. Then restrictions began to be lifted. People in manufacturing, construction and some services were allowed to go back to work. And then Spanish children under the age of 14 were allowed to leave their homes. With a further fuller de-escalation plan announced, such that by the end of June, we as a country will have entered into the new normality if the epidemic remains under control. So has Spain been able to flatten the curve? Well, somewhat. After lifting some restrictions, there was a noticeable upward spike in cases, but the overall trend does continue downwards. Yet again, however, the risk of a second spike of cases after the rest of the lockdown measures are lifted remains. Spain may have succeeded, but what happens afterwards is anyone's guess. France is another pretty interesting European case. France had a relatively gradual spread of the virus, slowly climbing throughout March, with the closure of schools and universities ordered on the 12th of March, with the closure of restaurants, cafes, cinemas and nightclubs effective the day after. The relatively early lockdown enabled cases to remain relatively controlled at around 5,000, except for a substantial peak around the Easter weekend in excess of 25,000 new cases in one day. But ever since then, cases have begun to fall ever so slightly before climbing again in recent days. So has France managed to flatten the curve? It would appear so. Daily cases have indeed begun to fall from their earlier peak. But the question remains as to whether this will continue to remain under control as France begins preparing to lift its lockdown on the 11th of May. The use of face masks on public transport and in secondary schools has now been mandated, with stores getting the right to ask customers to wear masks. Although the lifting of the lockdown will only be continued, according to the French Prime Minister, if new cases remain below 3,000 a day, stressing the importance of preventing a second wave. Finally, Germany. Germany has widely been seen as the gold standard in the response to the coronavirus, and despite the large quantity of reported cases, Germany's mortality rate has been extremely low. When it comes to the sheer quantity of cases, Germany had a gradual start, slowly climbing to 500 in early March before taking off, climbing to nearly 7,000 in one day towards the end of March, around the time that restrictions were being implemented including stricter social distancing and the closure of restaurants, cafes, pubs, sports facilities, bars, movie theatres and museums. However, Germany stopped short of a full lockdown. Yet, through mass testing, the country seems to have been able to control the situation effectively, with Germany conducting far more tests than comparable countries. And alongside that new testing, cases seem to have slowly yet surely been declining. So, has Germany been able to flatten the curve too? Well, maybe. More recently, as lockdown measures have been lifted, cases have begun to climb yet again. The virus's reproduction rate, the R0 number, has creeped above 1, the defining line between growth and decline. And as such, there's been talk of the lockdown returning to prevent further spread. And Angela Merkel has placed a lot of value on this R0 number, going as far as to highlight that even if we get to the point where each patient is infecting 1.1 people, then by October we'll be back at the limits of our healthcare system in terms of intensive care beds. If we get to 1.2, well then we'll hit full capacity of our healthcare system as early as July. And if it's 1.3, we hit the full capacity of our healthcare system in June. So you can see how little room for manoeuvre we have. As such, many are pushing for a reenactment of certain lockdown measures before Germany's curve begins to significantly climb again. So that's how a few European countries are coping with the coronavirus and the successfulness of their approaches. If you want to see us cover other European countries, then give this video a like, then comment below the countries you'd like to see us cover in future videos. You can also see us discuss the UK, China, Iran and Brazil in our video on the UK channel. 
And later today, the US channel will be releasing a video on the US's approach. You can find links to both in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from us, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. You can also get more from us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. Special thanks to our TLDR EU Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible.